what I thought I would do today is go over some of my favorite licks from my largest banjo influence, my biggest banjo hero of all time, which was the banjo player Alan Shelton. He was my favorite banjo player. A lot of times people ask me, who did you like the most? And it was without a shadow of a doubt, it was Alan Shelton who was um, Jim and Jesse's uh, banjo player. He played lots of people, Jim Eanes. I just want to kind of cover a couple of his little licks that I just uh, think the world of, and I, they're a big part of my playing. Some of them are very common that you'll hear him play all the time, and then some of them are less common. So what I wanted to do is just start with one that is based out of a basic kind of G shape here. And one of the things that I love about Alan Shelton is he's kind of influenced by jazz. He was kind of a mixture almost of uh, Reno and, and Scruggs in some manner. Uh, but he was influenced highly by jazz and he had a lot of syncopation in his playing. And in this little lick here, he st starts it not on beat one, which is what a lot of bluegrass players would do. So I'll play this and then we'll go over it. So here goes. So there you'll hear a rest in there and I put a vamp in there so you could hear where that's at. So you got one, two, three, four, rest. Now, what he's doing here is he's based out of this G chord. And I don't like to double thumb eighth notes myself. You can, I mean, you can get away with it. But in this case, I'm going thumb index. And all I'm doing is I'm here in this G chord position and I'm going four, five. So I'll, all right. And then he takes his fingers off. That, that ring finger comes off. And that roll pattern, Two one two after the the uh, the individual notes. Two one two, and that's part of what makes his styles. He uses some quote unorthodox rolls maybe, and then back to three. So this uh, you know after the uh, individual notes, you're going to play uh, two one two three. So and then back to two. So the whole pattern is two one two three two. So the individual notes. Now since I use thumb index, that uh, forces me to play the next note on that second string with my thumb and come up with my... Yeah, so I go thumb index, thumb middle there. So here we go, one, two, ready, go, rest. Now when you get to that last note, you are on the start of a new measure. So I'll do it again in context so you can hear this. Rest. That is beat one there. So you can use this on any of any chord as long as it starts in this shape. So if I move it up to C, I can go C, rest. They typically don't have three uh, measures of each chord. Normally they come in twos. Not to say that, that you don't ever have three measures, but most of the time you have two. So maybe I'll put this in uh, context with a G to a C. Rest. I'll do it over D as well. So Alan Shelton a lot of times would do it over the G chord. He would go rest. So just remember, rest, and then finish off however you want that measure there. Three, two, one, three, two, one is the easiest answer. Uh, he was a big fan of forward roll, by the way. That was a lot of his playing was just simple forward roll. It kind of, and it's kind of marvelous sometimes how it's like, how did you just do all that with just a forward roll? But anyway, so that's one that's, you know, I, I'm teaching that one because it's a little less common. I forgot where I got that. That was off a really old Jim and Jesse recording. One of his. So let's talk about another one that this one is really cool and hip as well. Uh, once again, he was kind of ahead of his time with his chord. So we're going to be in the key of G, and this is like a five chord or a D chord. And rather than play just an old vanilla old D or D7, even Alan Shelton puts this in there. He was a big fan of this sound. Okay, so if you'll grab your D7 here, that's seven seven and five counting from high to low that's a d7 
without a D in it. It's a rootless D, if you will. Uh, so what he does is this is the five of the chord. And my roll, one, three, two, one. That was a uh, another one of his favorite rolls. And then he's simply going to move the pinky up and you could say sharpening the five. I like to call it a uh, flatted 13 chord there. You know, for you folks at home, you don't need to know all that mess. Just know the shape. <laughs> I know all the theory it came later. You know, you know I, when I was learning this as a kid, I had no idea what to call it. I just blade it. That's it. That's all you need to know. But if, you know, some of you guys out there, you're, you're theory, music theory nerds like me, and you want to know the names of these things, you're basically sharpening the five. Okay? Now, you can hear it. It's very unresolved. If I'll put the D in the bass. Sounds ugly, right? You think it is anyways, but then it reaches home base there. So what's going to happen is you can see that note is just inching its way chromatically up to there and you get the resolve. So you get this. One, three, two, one is all I'm doing with my right hand. I really like to teach this little lick as a backup lick. So if I'm in G, you know, and I counter that D chord. Now, what's awesome about this, this is why I love this lick, is it's not just for use over the five chord. You could also use it over the one chord here, going to a C way up there. So here I am at 12, 12, and 10. That's a G7. And I just move it up, and now I'm over here on 12, 13, and 14, and that is a C chord. So a lot of times, I mean, I really overdo this one. I'll do this. I'll go G. G. Now D. I mean, you can just keep using them. advice to you on this one is use it in different keys. So like what if, what if I'm what if we're in G uh, D? For the key of D and it goes to G next, you can go Alright now back to D. Now you're on A. You could go, you know, you if you wanted to. There's your A. Really up there. Let's just start on this D. So that, just hear it as it walking up chromatically, all right? So that's one of his little licks, and boy do I use that one a lot. Now another one that he does, I'll show you this real quick, uh, since I'm on this kind of topic of these little D patterns, why is, might as well get the most of this as we can. So. You're gonna think, well, buddy, why don't you just bar that? That's that seventh fret D chord. Well, here's why. Don't bar. Use your pinky, your ring, and your middle finger here. And the new roll here is three, two, one, two. And watch what I'm gonna do here. I'm gonna, this third string is a little line and he's just gonna be walking down. All right, I'm gonna do my roll. Think of it as, if you will, if you're just looking at the, the lowest notes. I use this a lot in my own playing, and he did too. There's a version of me doing uh, The World's Waiting for the Sunrise, I believe. Something, I can't remember exactly what I played, but something like this. And the cool thing about this is you can hang out on the D longer and you can make it to uh, one, two, and then go down. Or you can move down immediately and hang out on the D7. So you got two options there. I like hanging out on the D, actually. What about G to C? Now, 
Now, it's beyond the scope of this video to take you through every single key, but my advice is you gotta really be able to do this on anything. Let's just pick a chord here, F. Now the B flat. So those are just some little ideas that Alan Shelton gave me, and trust me, there's gonna be a lot more Alan Shelton stuff to come. But I thought I'd just throw some out there for you. If you've enjoyed this video, let me know, and you know, that you're watching keeps me fired up and pumped up for banjo picking. Let me know if you love Alan Shelton. If you've never heard of him, trust me, go listen to him, man. He's the man. He if if if, if he never existed, then I would not be the banjo player that I am. But you guys take care and happy picking.